Hey, I'm Nancy Moran, co-founder of Azalea Music Group here in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm also the creator of my all-out, full-fledged, nothing held back, everything I can think of to tell you, ultimate booking and touring program. And yes, I know that's a mouthful and a really ridiculously long name for a program, but I was trying to have a little fun with it and make a point at the same time. So I'm here today for a couple of different reasons. First of all, I wanna put a face to the name and let you know that I'm a real person here. In today's virtual society, I think it's sometimes pretty easy to forget that we're dealing with real people. So behind all the email, the Facebook posts, the website, the newsletters, there's real people. Hey, I'm here, I'm a real people. <laughs> so I just wanted to have a chance to sit down and talk with you as much as I can face to face, at least face to camera. And I'm doing this totally on off the cuff. I don't have a script. I'm talking to you as if I was actually talking to you. I'm here in Azalea headquarters uh, in Nashville. And so um, this is as easily as I can do it to all of you. The second reason that I'm here is that I'm about to teach my ultimate booking and touring program again. I do this generally speaking about once a year and it's really part of my mission. I absolutely love to help people get out on the road and get their music heard. That's the thing I hear the most is people tell me that they really want to get their music heard. I get that, I'm the same way. I am a singer songwriter myself, so I have the same goals and desires that you do. And I wanna help you do that because I really actually think it's important for everyone's music to be heard. Not just for you, not you the artist that needs to be heard, but the audience, the world actually needs to hear your music. Whatever music you do, it's different than what I do and it all has an audience out there and needs to be heard. So today what I wanna talk about is um, I find that there are a lot of the same struggles over and over and over again that I see with musicians and artists trying to gig and tour and make a living at their music. And that's really key, is making a living doing this. Um, what I find is that for the people who aren't struggling, for those artists who are out there who are making a living at it, who are quite successful at it, I find that they have some similar traits and characteristics. And here's the really good news, all of those things can be learned and or developed. So I wanna talk about those traits with you today so that you can see where you fall on the scale and see if there's any areas that you maybe need to work on to, to up your game in this music industry. And the first thing that I wanna talk about before I get to the five key traits is something that I sort of call the profitable musicians framework. And it's something that, that I developed to use in my own career that I felt really helped me and I also use it with my clients on a daily basis. And it has three areas. I like to call it the power of three. The first area is the artist or creative area. Now this is the area that we all love, right? This is the reason that we got into music in the first place. So this encompasses your writing, your songwriting, your playing, you know, working on your instrument skills, rehearsing, uh, performing, getting on stage and actually doing the thing that we love to do, perform, um, all things about your image. It's all the fun, creative, artistic side of your personality and your business skills. So this is the easy part. This is the part we love to do. And I don't ever really feel like I have to egg someone on to do these things. Most of you are probably doing, are working on your artist side of things all the time because again, it's what we love to do. But the second part is what I call the business circle. It's the, the business side of your career. And this is all the things we love to hate. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's the thing that we claim that we are no good at, right? It's the booking, it's the marketing, it's the sales, it's networking. All the things that we, 
either don't want to do it all or we want somebody else to take over from us. But these areas, the money, actually, this is where the money comes from is the business side of your career. So these skills are vitally important. And I'm going to challenge you for a moment that you look at that story you're telling yourself that you're no good at business or you're no good at booking or you're no good at networking, whatever the area is that you think you're no good at, is that really true? And have you actually really given it a chance? Have you tried? Have you put some effort into it? Because I think that's not really true. And also, uh, one of the things that I talk about with my clients is Bring the artist side to your business side. Be creative in your business and see if that doesn't help. Okay, that was a little side side tip there. <laughs> the third element, which I also think is super, super critical in this framework, is your mindset. Now, when I talk about mindset, it's way more than just positive attitude, although having a positive attitude is certainly part of it. But your mindset is also your belief system about yourself and your talents, as well as about the music industry as a whole. It's the language that you use when you say things. It's your intentions, setting intentions of what you're, what you're going to do. So mindset encompasses a whole wide variety of things. But here's the key. The framework is you have your artist, you have your business and you have your mindset and all three of them work together and where they intersect in the middle that that little middle section is what I like to call your inner music mogul when they all come together when you're really on in your artist your business and your mindset that's when someone is truly profitable and successful and a music mogul. What's a music mogul? A music mogul is someone who is an influencer, not just successful, but they're an influencer. And I think that's really key. And I think on a certain level, that's what we're all trying to do with our music. Now that doesn't mean that you have to be Jay-Z or um, Beyonce or Taylor Swift to be a music mogul and to be an influencer. You could be influencing your local music area, your local community, your local area, whatever, right? So you can be a music mogul on your terms, but regardless of whether it's on a worldwide scale or a local scale, all three elements of the framework are vitally important. All right. So that being said, now let's talk about what I consider are the five traits of successful and profitable, and that's key, touring musicians. So the first key element, key trait, key characteristic that I see that successful and profitable artists have is they have a truly strong foundation. And when I say foundation, I mean it goes across all three of those areas of the, of the framework we just talked about. So for example, in their artist side, they're really strong writers and they've really worked on their writing skills. They are probably exceptionally good performers. They know how to put on a great show, not just a good show, not just adequate, not just getting by and winging it, They know how to entertain an audience. Where do you fit on that scale of things? How good is your performance? How good are your writing skills? Is that an area where you maybe need to develop more? Strong, profitable, successful musicians have a really good foundation in their artist skills. Also on their business side, likewise, they also have great business materials. So for example, their press kit is really outstanding at explaining who and what they do, who they are as an artist, and engaging people, compelling them to want more. How's your press kit hold up? Does it really tell people about you as an artist? Does it make them want to book you? 
maybe that's an area that needs some improvement. I actually had a really good friend of mine take my Ultimate Booking and Touring class the very first time that I taught it, actually a few years ago. And I was, first of all, surprised that he wanted to take the class because honestly, he was a touring musician. <laughs> he was doing it as many years as I had been doing it by that point, maybe even more. Um, but he said that he thought he wanted to take it because he knew that I did some things that he didn't. He knew that I knew things that he didn't. And he just sort of had an open mind and knew that he would learn something. I really applaud him for that. And one of the things that he learned in that class the first time through had to do with his artist bio. Um, John's bio was very similar to a lot of the bios that I see these days. They, it kind of read more like a resume or a, a list of accolades and, and things. It just, it wasn't truly what a bio is intended to do. And John went through the class and especially that lesson on writing your own bio. Um, and at first he didn't really, he, he didn't take it well because he was, you know, he didn't want to think that there was something wrong with his bio. But when he actually listened and paid attention to what I was talking about and was honest with himself about his bio, he realized that it needed some work. So John completely rewrote his entire bio from start to finish. I really applaud him again for that, for really making the effort. And he told me that in less than 30 days, he actually had a write-up in a local newspaper about one of his local performances. And in essence, that had never happened to him in the past um, without a lot of prodding, you know, and trying to get that piece. And in this case, he told me that he didn't even contact a newspaper. He, he sent in a listing, you know, for his gig and someone covered the gig and wrote up this article on John strictly based on his bio. And the reason that he knows that is because a lot of the information in the article was plucked directly out of his bio. So that's, that's just one way that your bio can be helpful in your career and in your bookings. Um, and getting you press and all kinds of other areas. And we go into vivid detail on your press kit, including your bio, in my Ultimate Booking and Touring class. So just another example of having a strong foundation. And finally, another way that um, successful artists have a strong foundation is in their mindset. And in this area, strong foundation is really in the belief in themselves, the belief in their own talents and knowing their why. They actually know what their purpose is and, and where they're trying to get to. And I think that's ultimately important. And again, we're gonna talk about a lot of these issues in the course. The second key attribute that I find in successful and profitable musicians is that they're completely willing and able to get out of their comfort zone. In fact, I would actually say that their normal is equal to an uncomfort zone. They're, they're outside of their comfort zone so much of the time that that's actually normal for them. And you know, a lot of artists, this is where a lot of artists get tripped up because they tell me how much they dislike booking. And I get it, they dislike booking because they're uncomfortable with it they have to talk about themselves. They have to negotiate, they have to do sales. They have to do these things that not only do they dislike, but they haven't done it very often. And so it's a very uncomfortable feeling. What's to like about that? Nobody likes feeling that way, I get it. But let me just say this. Do you remember what it felt like when you were learning bar chords on the guitar? It wasn't comfortable. Your fingers hurt a lot. In fact, you probably couldn't press the strings after a while, they hurt so much. And you thought, I'm never ever going to get through this. I'm never gonna make it through. But you did because you persevered and you just kept doing it because there was an end in mind. There was a goal. And now you play bar chords all the time. And my guess is you don't really think about it. Or how about the first time that you got on stage and maybe did an open mic? Were you afraid then? Were you nervous and your hands were shaking? Mine were. 
<laughs> I was a basket case the first time I got on stage because it was uncomfortable and it was the first time it was unfamiliar to me. But I got over it. In fact, not only did I get over, I got to the, the place where I absolutely love it. I adore it. And that's what I want to do over and over again. I'm telling you right now that it's possible for that same thing to happen with your booking. I know it doesn't seem like that's possible. And maybe you are thinking, I don't even want to get there with my booking. But I'm telling you that if you want to tour, if you want the gigs, if you want the good gigs, you can do it. It's just a matter of learning the system. Once the system is in place and you're doing it over and over again, it will become familiar and less uncomfortable. But the key trait is to just get f comfortable and familiar with being uncomfortable and working through that uncomfortability. Is that a word, uncomfortability? It is today. <laughs> so number three, the third key attribute that profitable musicians have and use on a daily basis is they think outside the box. In fact, I don't even like that phrase, think outside the box, because that's kind of in the box to me. They crush the box. There is no box. And I think this is a really vital element for any area of your music career. And here's what I want to encourage you to do, is to bring your creativity to your business. I'm constantly amazed at the fact that incredibly talented and creative artists that I know on stage and in their writing and in, in their artistic side of things, they're incredibly creative, but when it comes to business, when it comes to putting together a press kit, when it comes to writing a letter, when it comes to networking, when it comes to do, doing anything on the business side of things, they completely shut down and get completely boring. What is up with that, people? <laughs> Bring a little fun and excitement and creativity to your business side of things. Put a little of your personality into it. That's what's going to get you the attention that you deserve. Also, I just wanted to say that this is one area where I think I really excel, especially in the booking area, because I have an incredibly long list of venues that I go over in the class. If you're just looking at coffee houses and bars and restaurants and um, even house concerts, if, if that's as far out of the norm as you've gotten is just house concerts. And don't get me wrong, house concerts are great, but there are so many places that you can be performing your own music today and getting paid for it. And there are a wide variety of ways that you can diversify your performing career so that you can be profitable and play gigs that are fulfilling as well. Anyway, this is just, this is part of the program that I really love. I spend a lot of time on it because I really want to get you to think outside that box, to crush that box and get to the point where anywhere is a place where you can take your music. And we're gonna talk about that in a lot of detail. The fourth point is that successful, profitable musicians focus on value. And when I say value, I mean their own value. So they value their own talents. They know what they bring to the table. They know that there's a value in that talent and they value their time by creating these systems and not reinventing the wheel over and over and over again. But they also value the time of the venue and they, and they value the venues that they, that they play in. So, they provide value to the venue and they think about what the venue needs, not just about their own needs. That's a pretty key element, I have to say. If you take nothing else from what I'm talking about today but that one area, value yourself, value the venue, and bring value to everything that you do, I absolutely promise you that you'll see more and better bookings instantaneously. And they also value their fans. 
Of course, they keep in touch with them on a daily and weekly basis and they provide value to the fans through their performances and even when they're not on stage. And finally, the fifth key element is a really big one. Double star it, circle it, whatever it is you have to do. <laughs> Successful, profitable musicians are action takers. Action takers. They're not whiners and complainers. They're not sitting at home on the couch moaning about the way things used to be in the music business. And they aren't waiting to be rescued by a booking agent or a manager or somebody else who's going to do all of the cruddy stuff for them. They're action takers. They get off their butts and they make their career happen. They're doers. And you can do this. Even if you have been that whiner and complainer, that person who's waiting to be rescued, light bulb can go on and you can now suddenly be an action taker. It pains me to see talented people, and I see this all the time, it pains me to see talented people not being able to make a living from their incredible talent. It pains me to see talented people sitting at home and not sharing their talents with the world. Your music needs to be heard. Your audience is waiting for you. So I'm hoping that starting today, you're gonna to be one of those action takers. So how did you do on the five key traits? How do you compare? Are you great at all of them? Awesome. You must be rocking in your career and I think that's incredible and I hope that our paths will cross sometime so we can rock out together. But if you're not completely rocking or if you saw a couple areas and were like, oh wow, I, gee, I really need to work on that. No worries, don't worry about it, okay? That's, that's why I'm bringing them up today is so that you're aware of them and they're things that you can work on. You can develop these, you absolutely can develop these. And if gigging and touring is part of your career path, if it's something that you really want to do, I totally wanna help you do that. I think I said this before, but if I didn't, or even if I did, it's part of my mission, truly. Besides getting my own music out there, it's part of my mu mission to help other musicians get their music out to their audience. I can't do what you do, so we're not in competition. So I wanna help you do that. And I hope that you're gonna work on key element number five by being an action taker right now. Go to ultimatebookingandtouring.com. I, th I think the link is below me or to the side. I don't know. We're going to put the link somewhere on the screen. <laughs> Look for it. Go to ultimatebookingandtouring.com and register for my program today. It starts April 27th and you don't have to go anywhere. You can take it at home in your PJs or your underwear. I won't tell, I promise. You can take it however you want but you still get the best of all worlds because you still get access to me in our live Q&A calls and also access to past and present students. So you get a lot of support from other people who are doing the same thing that you're doing. You can ask questions and their advice and see how they did it. Um, I think support is super important for musicians in particular. We tend to do a lot of things on our own. And I'm not really sure how we got that way, but I'm here to tell you support, super critical. So whether you get it from me in this program or somewhere else, make sure you're getting support. But I'm hoping that you're gonna join me for Ultimate Booking and Touring so that I can help you get your music heard, share your music with the world. Take action right now and register. Hope to see you in class.